fish room update getting ready for an auction and disaster i mean expensive disaster all right fishy folks happy fry fry friday i've been super busy the last two weeks <clears throat> in the fish room um sort of took a hit in that it's a disaster again and i mean it's messy I, unfortunately i did lose two fish that were pretty expensive and uh weren't even mine i bought them for a customer so um, the two green phantoms i bought died they had a fungus when i bought them i knew they had a fungus i bought them anyway because i thought i could heal them and i don't know what killed them uh, the first one died within uh, about two days the second one looked healthy looked green you know the other the, the one that died was very pale obviously it was dead and uh, the second one uh, when i checked on them and i found the first dead one i he looked fine he looked healthy he looked green he looked he was moving around and uh, i i didn't come down to the fish room for a day and a half essentially one nighttime feeding and all day yesterday i wasn't here and uh <clears throat> this morning when i come down it's friday morning it's about five it's about six o'clock now um dead dead as a doornail looks like a fake pleco um so yeah i don't know big loss on my part and uh to kim my customer who's that goes they were i'm gonna try again um i when the first one died i i ordered two more from my supplier so uh i don't know i don't know if he's gonna do anything about it it doesn't really matter um i would understand if he didn't because i took them knowing they were sick but uh this time i won't um so anywho uh preparing for an auction i have my local fish club auction jersey shore aquarium society on sunday um i have kind of a busy weekend we have the liverpool manchester united match let me know what you think um i'm picking up a new to me barbecue uh 200 grill for 50 bucks can't beat it and then of course i want to kind of neaten up the the fish room but um what am i going to do to get ready well <clears throat> if you're selling in a local fish club auction you have to pre-register you don't have to but it's better if you pre-register and usually you get more of a cut now this is my local club that i belong to so um i definitely pre-register and i i try to bring more stuff to this club than other ones because they make more money from the stuff i sell but to be honest, the best one around here is the Bucks County Aquarium auction, which is May 5th. And the reason why that's the best for me is it costs a buck a bag for me to, to auction. So if I sell a bag of fish for $10, I make $9. In this auction that I'm going to on Friday, if I sell a bag of fish for $10, I only make $6. So you can see there's a pretty big difference in, in gross profit. <clears throat> That said, because it's my local club, the club that I belong to, I um, it doesn't matter to me. I'm doing it so I make a little money. I get my name out there and, uh, you know, they make some money. Now, you can certainly belong to more than one local club. And I may actually belong to Bucks County. If I don't, I'll join for sure because they're fantastic. But I feel like Jersey Shore Aquarium Society is the one that I started with. Right. So I don't know. It's kind of kind of weird, kind of a uh, sappy, I guess. But hashtag keeping it real. Um, so what am I bringing? That's a good question you ask. I'm bringing uh, mostly trios of guppies. I did. Uh, I was supposed to bring three blue zebra angels that I have left. However, I sold those. Thank you, Terrence. As soon as it warms up, they're on their way, pal. Um, but let, let me show you. Let me show you what I'm bringing. Stand by. All right, fishy folks, this is my male guppy tank, and I do have some steel nebula males and some other really nice looking males in here, but I'm bringing a trio of steel nebula guppies. Um, 
<clears throat> to sell. I'm also bringing, what else? You know, it would help if I had the list in front of me, but I don't. I shut this light off to film, so I'm going to turn that back on. Uh, a trio of the Tanaka Maple Leafs. And um, I might, no. So I really like these Japanese blues. Uh, not just because, you know, I go to Japan twice a year and it's kind of cool. They're Japanese, at least Japanese in the name. Uh, but they suck at auction. And the reason is they... They get really pale when they're in a bag, and they look like crap. So if you don't know what they look like, you don't really want them. And even if you're going to take a chance, most people don't bid on them. So if the starting bid is 2 bucks, they go really cheap. And I don't want to do that, so I'm not bringing them. Uh, I'm bringing a trio of green cobras, a trio of red cobras. I'm going to bring a trio of these uh, metallic tequila sunrise guppies i'm going to bring a trio of these half black aocs i do have to pull one out for a customer who wants one um a specific male he said so i have to get that taken care of <clears throat> and to be honest i don't remember what else i'm bringing uh, i have a list somewhere but i'm old and forgetful so yeah anyway this tank looks empty. It's Zlatan's tank. But let's find Zlatan. Because I love looking at Zlatan. Except he hides. There he is. All the way in the corner behind the filter. And there's his uh, his mate in the tank. I don't know. Uh, I don't have a name for him either. But tank needs to get cleaned. That's what happens when you feed the heck out of Plecos. Tanks get dirty. Um, breeding project over here. These... Uh, these L144s or lemon blue-eyed bristle nose plecos. Still too young to breed, but they're all over the place. There's seven or eight in there, I don't remember. Um, and they do eat like pigs. I'm going to put some rapache in there in a second. Um, this is the only tank that didn't eat the rapache. These are the uh, glass belly guppies that I got at the Danbury auction. But yeah, that was rapache from two days ago. They didn't eat it. Everyone else ate it, destroyed it, but uh, yeah, so we have babies in the red dragon tank. You can see there's one there. Um, just going to let them grow out and start the colony and then uh, then figure out what they're what they're going to cost if you want to buy them. This is a little funny tank up here. Um, this was one of the metallic tequila sunrise guppies I have. Uh, this was one of the females. And she was ginormously pregnant. And now she's not. And there's no fry in here. So pretty sure the move scared her. She just reabsorbed her babies and is going to try again. But I'm going to probably put her back. I, I just wanted her in here. Oh, look. The airline for the filter popped off. I got to fix that. And there's Bruce. Hi, Bruce. He's just chilling in his little paradise. Yep, hanging out. Um, the Oscars are doing well. They've seemed to uh, gotten used to their new home. Also, the airline for that filter is out, so I gotta take a peek and see what happened there. And of course, we have Funky Gold. No, wow, Chunky Gold Medina. Just loving life. Hi, Chunky. And uh, I don't know if I've ever talked about this molly over here, but it's a gold dust molly I had in the molly tank. And it appeared to be blind when I pulled all the fish out. And you can see its scales are still a little, uh, little jacked up. Um, so I pulled him out of the tank and I put him in here in quarantine with Chunky and he seems to have bounced back quite well. And when I say bounce back, his eyes were all uh, grayed over he had a lot of little fungus on him and uh, just lethargic and listless. Wow, those are two big words for me. Um, but yeah, a little clean water, a little meds, and he, he seems to be on the mend. So yeah, he's just going to live his life in here with Chunky because I don't have any mollies like him right now. So doing well. This tank, like I said, Chunky's whole job is to clean duckweed, and I'm pretty sure he's done it, so I should probably be pulling some of this 
this Java moss out of here and putting in some of my live bearer, bearer tanks. So you're going to ask yourself, tell me about this auction. How does it work? Well, I bag up fish, I bring fish, I uh, label the fish, and then I, um, I register them, and then they're auctioned off. And, you know, from a seller standpoint, <coughs> sometimes it's great, sometimes it sucks. I've, when I, you know, so you could say I've lost money at some auctions. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's just say I have a, a pair of guppies that I sell for $20. And at auction, someone buys them for 5 Theoretically, I lost $15 of profit, right? However, what if I, I, I wasn't going to sell those guppies? What if they were just going to stay in my tank? So, yeah. A little bit of math there, a little bit of thinking, but that's how I look at it. So, I try not to lose money. But I like going to the auction. It's fun. I see a bunch of fish nerds like me. Um, and usually I buy stuff. A lot of my fish have come from auctions. Those have come from auctions. Those have come from auctions. These came from an auction. Those came from an auction. Um, yeah, so you can see a lot of fish in my fish room came from auctions. It's a great place to get fish cheap, a lot of people ask me, Mike, where do you get all your java moss? I've seen java moss and guppy grass at the auction. I want to be looking for some more plants for my tank upstairs for the auction. So, uh, you know, if there's a great deal on bulk food, I'll buy it at auction. I got these Snow White Mollies at auction. Unfortunately, one of the Snow Whites has turned sort of white with black spots. So we're going to see how the babies... Uh, babies come out right now they look like guppy babies so it wouldn't shock me if they were from a tank upstairs when I say upstairs I mean up here um, I found out that this tank had two water lines going in it fill lines and the overflow was sort of clogged with the uh, rickia so if I ran the water longer than uh, 10 minutes to fill it would overflow and I'm guessing that's how we had guppies in here and guppies in here. It overflowed into these tanks and one of the fry came with it. So hope that made sense. I don't really know if it did. All right, fishy folks, I'm gonna feed some rapashi and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So hang out. All right, fishy folks, here is the morning wood. <laughs> it's green. Um, it's specifically designed for plecos and other wood eating fish and uh, I just put it in like a minute ago and uh, you can see already two plecos are on it as well as some guppies are nibbling guppies will eat anything they're pigs so uh, I do have some in this tank as well and you can see the calicos haven't gotten to it yet although one looks like he's scavenging over um, <clears throat> this is the spawn and grow I think I'm going to be ordering uh, a couple different kinds from Super Cichlids using the promo code HAPNATION. Thank you, Mr. IFG. Um, I've been trying new foods recently, uh, getting away from just one brand. And, um, you know, I think it's good for the fish. So, look at this. I mean, how many fish are, are just devouring this food? The thing about rapashi, there's two things you have to know about rapashi. One, you make it yourself. It's gel food, so you add boiling water. Usually a, a three to uh, two to one ratio. Um, and it stinks after you make it. it. You know, you open up the container like, ugh. But it doesn't stink, stink bad enough where, you know, you shouldn't feed it. What makes it great for the fish is it's... There's no fillers at all. It's 100% deliciousness and nutrition for them. So there's some uh, spawn and grow in uh, one of my American Purple Delta tanks from one Mr. Daniel Anderson. Daniel has been working on my website. Go check it out, guys. It's really fantastic. He's added a bunch of great new features. He's changed the colors. I really appreciate what Graham from um, Aquarium Adventures did by starting it and getting me up and running. Um, and uh, he did a great job. And then Daniel Anderson just took it one step further, spent quite a lot of time on it, and I really appreciate it. So check the website out. 
Uh, if you're looking to do some website design for yourself or you know you want to start one, uh, get in touch with Daniel Anderson. I'll have his email address in the description below for you. But yeah, here are some more uh, purple guppies just devouring this spawning row rapashi in here too, you can see. So if you're not sure about rapashi, it's a little pricey if you look at it in a small container, but it makes a lot of food and the fish truly like it and it's actually quite good for them. So let's take a look up here. Look at these guys. And this guy's, he's like me eating ribs. Nom, 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 nom. All right, fishy folks. I gotta go, uh, I gotta go eat breakfast, get some coffee in me, edit this video, get it up on YouTube. Got a busy weekend ahead of me. So, uh, yeah, hope if you come into the auction and you want something, shoot me an email. I'll bring it to you. Make it easy for everyone. No shipping, no worrying about weather. And uh, if you're coming to the auction, come say hi to me. I'll be wearing the Michael's Fish Room shirt. Check out the website, guys. Let me know if you want to buy anything. And uh, have a great day. The, the hose, the hose, the vacuum line, the vacuum? Wow. The airline for the pump fell off. Pump. Holy Jesus, I sucked this morning. I don't have an opening, so I'm just going to wing it.